Pratt Phillips. Look what we've got today. We've got the Toyota Helix from 1983. Look at this beauty. If you're into the 1980s, you're gonna love this thing. It is amazing. We've got the little functional tailgate. We've got lights. We've got four-wheel drive, squishy tires, amazing detail, chrome wheels, and all sorts of goodies. But without further ado, we're gonna bring this thing to life right now. And the camera crew is gonna help me film. Oh, you can drive first? Okay. So here we go. There is a high speed, low speed. We currently have it in the high speed. I know it doesn't look like a blazer. That's because it's a uh, Helix. So we're going into the weeds right now. We're gonna get in there and just do this thing right. Four wheel drive all the way. Yes, get over it. Get over it, yes. We have very good ground clearance on this one. I think it's gonna do okay. Even though it's a 118th scale, it's definitely gonna get around. And as you can see, we have not been doing proper maintenance. We have trees all over the place here. I think we call those blades of grass in real life. But we're going into the ditch. Here we go. Whoa! So cool. So if you guys haven't had a new one of these crawlers lately, you gotta check out one of these FMS crawlers. They are so much fun. And I mean, if you go down there and you just wanna rip it up, go really fast and all that stuff, you know, these are definitely not for you. These ones are gonna be more for the refined drivers. If you wanna get down in the weeds and actually try to do some challenging climbs in and out of the desert features, this is definitely what you want. It's so much fun to do it. And by the way, I feel like even though going fast and doing jumps and having the bashers are fun, this is just a totally different experience. And if you're not used to it, look at that, how it deflects over that big rock. I don't even wanna go that way because I'm gonna get trapped. Let's try going this way. So what we've been trying to do, Megan and I, on this Brian Phillips RC, is we've been trying to bring you guys some surface vehicles every Wednesday for a long time now. And the surface Wednesday is gonna get harder and harder as we get into winter. So we're super excited to be doing it, but we're not sure if we're gonna be able to keep it up during the winter months. We're gonna do our best because here on Brian Phillips RC, you know us for fixed wing aircraft, like all the different cool airplanes we've done over the past, hundreds of them. But we love doing ground vehicle stuff too and surface vehicles. Can't wait to be able to bring you some boats, more float footage, all that good stuff. It's coming, just wait. Look how sweet that is. Turn signal, now let's go ahead and switch our lights. As you can see, off. Now, low beams and high beams. And we're gonna go into the slower speed right now also. So now that's the slow, ultra precise power setting. And I mean, you can just get going. Super precision movements, which is really nice when you're crawling up a super steep slope and you have to really control and keep from spinning out your wheels. So as you can see, this thing just does it all. That is a really incredible climb. Ooh, wow. Because that is incredible. Really I can't believe it made it up there. That is so cool. And obviously, you know, just, if you guys haven't noticed, we pretty much did this in our front ditch. Now you may not have a front ditch in your property or your house or wherever you live, but I guarantee you got something like this close by. And if you don't, just go get a shovel and make it happen, guys. <laughs> this is so much fun. And I guarantee it's gonna be one of the cool experiences that you have in your RC career. Let's try to go up this really challenging hill here. I've given it about 25% throttle stick input. And look at this, trigger I should say. And I, got, I finally got jammed up, mostly because there's like trees and stuff in my way. I'm gonna try going here. Now full throttle is just gonna get you stuck many times. But that's one of the beauties of using these. These rock crawlers have such amazing pneumatic tires and they're just like real deal. Oh, and then by the way, I need to show you this. I show you this in the unbox build part, but what you wanna do is put it in from A mode to B mode, and then you can adjust your throttle. See the steering wheel all the way over? So there's one, two, three. So there's three. One, see how much steering it is? Two. Three, doesn't seem to be adjusting it, it's all the way up. 
but there is basically uh, an expo for steering if you want. There it is. Sorry, I was hitting the wrong button. Reverse angle, reverse steering angle. There you go. You see how it goes real wide, narrow, middle, and real wide. You want to put it to the real wide. In my opinion, that's the best way to handle these trucks and cars. Because if you do that, you're going to be able to do the most tight turns you could ever imagine. Okay, now check this out. That's a really loose hill. Oh, no, we're already getting dug in. Oh, no. Don't high center it, Brian. Okay, I'm going to go to my high speed mode. And double beep. Okay, so we're in high speed. See if we can burn it out of here. Oh, see what I'm talking about, guys? You're going to have to jackknife this thing. You're going to have to... You're gonna have to come over here and see if you can cut it sideways. Make sure you get into all the uh, poison ivy you can find for extra excitement. Oh no, everybody died. So as you can see, the thing is just almost, whoa, the thing is impeccable. And so I really enjoy driving it. Now we don't have any rocks right here. We need to find some rocks because I think the rocks would help us make that move. Put some rocks in the back of it. Yeah, definitely. Now, I'm, I'm gonna get back in the ditch and uh, I think I'm, oh no, everybody died again already. I think I'm gonna go ahead and hand the reins over to the camera crew. As you can see, the thing is not hard to drive. All right, camera crew, you ready okay. to do this thing? I was gonna back up here, there's a rock. Oh, there is? Right here, there's a rock. There's a couple rocks. Can they see the brake lights are Oh yeah, the backup lights? Yeah. Good idea. How about that one right behind me too? Okay. This one? Yeah. Okay. We'll put that in. Okay. All right. Let's see how that does. I'm surprised that you drove it that long before you rolled it. So I, I know, would say and then that's I rolled pretty it darn good. Like right, right in a row. Are you in the low speed mode? Yeah, okay. definitely. Definitely. Oh, there's a couple more rocks. You want to get those rocks? Yeah. Here, I'll get them. Here, okay. The little rocks. We are talking about this inside, and I think it'll probably help. Okay, I don't want to go, like, straight up that hill. Now, FMS is just putting out some really awesome cars and trucks here. And so we've been super, super satisfied with them. They seem like they're better every time we do a new one. Oh, no, you're going to have yeah. to back up. You're going to flip it. Turn the other direction. There you go. There you go. Oh, now you got it. Plant I'm see got if I can me. change my position. Okay. Okay. All right, do it. Guys, look at that, how it just slips. Oh, oh no, no, you lost oh. your load. Oh no, the camera crew blew her load on camera. We were talking about that tailgate. Oh, I was gonna say. Being. Time for the uh, hand of God. Yeah, the, go. the tailgate's a little bit loose on this mm -hmm. one, which is unusual. We haven't experienced that before it's not from real FMS. not definitive in that snapping shut. Obviously, the camera crew doesn't have a CDL. I do she not. She doesn't secure her load very nope. good. As we've learned from past crashes five seconds ago. Okay, You're try that. That might be a little better. Are you on top of a tree? Yep. Okay, let's go try getting out of the ditch. Do you want to go down to that one? We yeah. We haven't done that for a while. Let me go down just a little bit further than... So folks, as you can tell, this area is a work in progress. We've mentioned it a few times. And we're really glad to be able to share it with you soon. As in, anytime soon, you may have noticed there's stakes in our property. Here's another stake. They're going to be digging. They're I'm going to be digging. I'm going to lose my load again. You didn't lose it that time. Woo. Nope, but I made it. Okay, all right, all right kick it ready? into high gear. Whoa, do we have like a flat or something? What happened to our suspension? <laughs> the rock is a little off kilter. Okay, Can bring I... it over here. Let's go down this, this path here, right there. Bring it down, slow, do it slow. See if you can keep it under control. Now turn toward me. Good job. Walk it down slow. Ooh. If those rocks slip, you're gonna tip. I know. You're doing a good job. It's so much fun, guys. It's hard to explain. It's kind of like, it's like driving in real life. When you're a kid and you're learning to drive, it's really hard. But then you start doing stuff like this and you're like, wow, that's a I new challenge. Like, yeah. Because anybody can drive a radio controlled car. Okay, now you do it with the rocks in the back. Okay. All right. Okay, here we go. Switch. Trading off, guys. 
So we've been super happy with these FMS vehicles. They're really, really fun to drive. They're not fast, not the crawlers. I want to take that same path. Is that all right? Yeah. Okay. Because this looks like a super fun little washout area. And I just want to see if I can get it out of here. Oh man, it's just so easy. Yeah. It just takes it. It's not as loose right there. No, it's not. It does look like we're kind of a little bit overloaded. Yeah, Hopefully the DOT is so. not watching. Okay, now I'm going to go into high speed mode. Okay, there's high speed mode. And then what I want to do is I want to come over here and dump this load if I can get it to dump. Yeah, yeah, good job <laughs> taking out the bush there, Brian. Maybe you should keep your eyes on the road. Here, I'll get it. So I want to see if I can slam the brakes on and make the rocks come out. That'd be oh, so cool. Okay. I guess I loaded them in there pretty good. Let's see if I can get it though. Oh, don't do it to me. Oh no, no. they just won't go now. Okay, we can dump them out this way. Hand of God style. Yeah. <laughs> so guys, if you're looking for a super cool, nostalgic 1983 style Toyota, which this thing reminds me so much of the movie Back to the Future, when Marty McFly gets the black one, it makes me think how sweet would this be if you painted it black, it would totally look like that. I don't know if it's the same truck because I was sort of a twinkle in my parents' eyes about that time. But either way, it's really cool and I think it's gonna look good in your collection. So hopefully this video helped answer some questions for you. If you have any more questions or comments about this car or about the way we reviewed it, leave them in the comments below. But definitely buy this thing from the links in the video description below. You'll help support our channel, our family, and obviously put a smile on our face. If you don't wanna buy this particular car and you've got something else in mind, you can obviously check the links in the video description below, as well as brianphillipsrc.com for all the footage that we've done over the history of our channel, which is a lot of footage. So if you're thinking about something we did a few weeks ago, it's probably easiest to just look right on the playlists or videos on Brian Phillips RC by clicking on my face, and then you can see what's recent. But if it's maybe not so recent, you can search my name. If you know what you're looking for on brianphillipsrc.com, you can search by manufacturer. But then on YouTube, you can search by name. And we try to tag everything so you can find stuff easily. But boy, these things are super fun and getting so well refined. And guys, if you're in the manufacturing industry, why don't we have these things on airplanes yet? It's the question I'm gonna keep asking because if you fly fixed wing aircraft, you want things like this because these are awesome. And I know that the rim would wanna separate from the wheel, but we can run a little higher PSI and get really good results because I want squishy tires. I like a nice squishy pair, right? Mm -hmm. Okie dokie, thanks for watching guys. Stay tuned for the unbox if you're curious, coming right now. All right guys, we forgot grass hops. We always forget grass hops with these cars. <laughs> but we know that most of you are gonna be driving them right in your own front lawn or your backyard or whatever it happens to be. And we noticed that the 118 scales are super susceptible to terrible ground handling when it comes to grass ops. So we always like to show you if they're gonna work. Now, we're not trying to beat up this car versus that car, but honestly, are you kidding me? Land on that, that would've been so cool. <laughs> what the heck? Come on, mother nature, throw us a bone. So as you can see, this one, just like the last 118th, or was the last one we did a 124? I think it was a 124, And it actually, did awesome this on this. this one's really good too. Yeah, look how good it's doing. It's like not even phased, even mm -hmm. remotely by this grass. So I gotta say, folks, we have been super, super impressed with these FMS vehicles. Honestly, they've always made us drool, even back before we really started getting into the ground vehicles on the channel. And you gotta understand something. If you're into fixed wing, you probably were into cars before you were into fixed wing. I mean, fixed wing is awesome. It's, it's still by far the most immersive experience. And if you're looking for a place that you can get help, you're in the right place, Brian Phillips RC. Now, don't be surprised, just because we do a little bit of footage on the ground vehicles on Wednesday doesn't mean that our primary focus isn't in the air, and it really is. But let's be honest, guys, when the winds are like they are today, and if you saw our windsock right now, you would understand. So you can't always be in the air, and unless you're slope soaring, you don't want wind to look like that. So just to be clear, we love these ground vehicles, and we love to bring you guys the best here on Brian Phillips RC. We hope you guys will check the links in the video description below and buy one for your very own, because look at that. We didn't even get bound up one time, 
And just to be clear, that's some tall fescue grass, fescue grass. That's some Kentucky blue we're going through. And then probably some brome in there a little bit once in a while. Yep. Because this used to be a farm field that they were taking hay off of. Now this is mostly our front yard. But just to be clear, this is some thick and really, really thick grass. And then it's also bumpy. So if you guys are thinking about driving this in the backyard, you should be no problem. But look how sweet it looks bouncing along. Totally cool. All right, guys, we promised you the unbox build radio setup. And I can tell you this, there's not much build and there's not much radio setup. But even still, if you're curious how this comes out of the box, stay tuned. It's coming right now. YouTube, you have a box. We're going to open it right now. This is obviously another edition of Surface Wednesdays. So we're going to see, oh my goodness, what do we have there? We have a Toyota something or another, Hilux, 1983. That's weird. I remember that year from something. Oh, it looks like we have a book here. Okay, there's a book. That is a cool looking pickup truck. Looks like definitely 1983 vintage. Got some big old knobby tires. Kind of reminds me of the truck that was in Back to the Future. Except it's not. It's probably, actually gets pretty dang close now that I think of it. Okay, cool, let's see how this looks. Comes in a little travel case, which is nice. These things, sometimes they have handles, sometimes they don't. Looks like this one opens on this side and then clips in down here. Okay, so first things first, transmitter comes out. I always like to go over all the details of these things with you guys before you have to make a purchase decision. Okay, looks like a little break in there with the, that's cool. And this is the kind with the lid, and this is what we do with our lids. We just throw those right in the garbage can because they get in the way. On, off, okay. There's steering trim and throttle trim. And then of course they trigger, reverse, forward. Looks pretty straightforward, shaped like some sort of a sports car. We got a little bit of residual glue on ours. Okay, and then the truck, the sweet spot. But we're gonna get to that in just a second because we have to open the bag of goodies. So the bag of goodies, of course, has the tailgate, which is pretty sweet with the branded Toyota on the back. Feels like real heavy, a couple of thicknesses worth of plastic, but it looks like metal right there. I don't know if that's metal. Wheel tool for the lugs. I found that they don't work very good on deep wheels, so just keep that in mind. You may need a nut driver. And then 2S charging port plugs into a regular wall outlet. We're gonna show you that next, right after we bring this beauty out of the box. Oh yeah, so cool. We're just gonna peel that. If you don't mind, I will. That is so sweet looking. Look at these squishy tires. Chrome wheels. It's all chromed out four wheel drive. Got the pinstriping detail. Then on the back, we've got the uh, License plate, which actually does have a protective cover on it in case you want it to look even better. You can peel that off. Looks like those are operational tail lights. Then, of course, underneath we've got differentials front and back, spring loaded suspension, which is pretty sweet, brushed motor, digital nine gram servo up front for steering. Looks like ball bearings on each of the wheels, or at least the, yeah, it looks like there's ball bearings here and here. You can see the wires that trace back to the controller. U-joint here, really nice. And then of course the plastic on the front license plate as well. We've got two functional headlights and I'm not sure if those work yet. We'll find out in just a couple of seconds. Let's just get some of that garbage out of the way. Let's pop the hood and see what's going on. These don't function, but they look really cool. Okay, so this is where they hide the battery and shipping. Looks like the multi-function receiver board is in here too comes with 7.2 volts, 380 milliamp hour, 5C pack. This is a Hextronics balance charge port, which goes into this thing. It's keyed. It won't go backward unless you try really hard. Don't try really hard, you'll probably get it. And then if you look inside of here, you can see where the electronics are. And this is where you plug in your discharge lead. And that's your discharge lead with the Molex connector, two pins. So these are two cells in series. So you have cell one here, and then cell two here. So cell one, and then continues on to two. So plus, minus, plus, minus. 
and then this is parallel to this, and then this is parallel to that. So you're gonna get your full 4.2 times two at full charge, so 8.4 volts at this point. And over here, you should see 4.2 volts between these two and between these two, because they're in series, hence 2S. So let's go ahead and charge this real quick. We actually have a few of them that are charged, but we can show you the way we normally do this. So normally, if you have one of these adapters or a laptop or whatever, you can plug this thing in. We'll show you how it looks and how it works. On the front of the charger, it says input five volts at two amps and the output is 7.4 volts at 1000 milliamp hours, okay? So we are going to plug this in, okay? And we might need to flip that around. Oh, we've got a red light, solid red light. Now this is a battery, of course, that came with it. And so this is a ready to run. So that means that you don't have to provide anything except for the double A's or triple A's for your charger or for your, rather for your controller. We'll get to that in a minute. Now, if you prefer to be able to plug in multiple, multiple of these little batteries, this thing's not gonna work because it's only designed for one S packs, but we use it all the time on our aircraft. So really what you have to do is get yourself something like this, the S155, I'll just wipe the screen off so you can see it really good. And then of course it plugs into the wall through this cable, which is included. And then you can plug in your Hextronics balance lead right there. But then you're like, this isn't gonna work so good. So you have to come up with something to facilitate adapter between your battery and this. So in my case, the way I do it, if I'm using the nice charger, I'll plug in one of these. This came with a battery that we've had, but we could have just done an IC3 or an EC3. That plugs in there. And then this plugs in here. And you might be asking yourself, why do you have so many different leads plugged into the same thing? Well, the reason we have so many leads plugged in is because I like to do balance charging because then I'll discharge several packs and then I can get ready to rock and roll. Okay, so we can lay that down. Let the charger start up. It says 4.19 and 4.2. So if you were gonna charge this, which it's pretty much full, you'd press that, you'd scroll up, change it from five amps to what you desire. In this case, this is a 380 milliamp hour. So I'd go to like 0.4 amps or 400 milliamp hours and then hit start. It's gonna start charging and then I can press down and I can see what the voltage of each of the cells are. So pretty cool. And that's just an example of using a much nicer charger than the one that's included. Of course, this one's not included, but it is one of the ways that you can get the most out of your batteries because then you can really charge them quicker or you can charge them slower if you prefer. So anyway, for now, we'll use one of our charged batteries to get this battery going in our car. Then we're gonna use these triple A's to actually put in the transmitter. So now the transmitter does come with the truck, but it doesn't come with batteries in it, okay? So as we said earlier, we've got this little cover where I just ripped those off because they drive us nuts. And this particular style has, I like to call it a magazine loading style. So it says on one side or the other, there it is, minus and plus. So plus is on the inside, so plus goes up Plus is where the bump is. So you see how it says plus there. So you can put that in and then minus goes in the opposite side shooting up, okay? Then these batteries, of course, will run your transmitter. There's some flashing lights to indicate that it's not bound to anything. And that's normal at this stage of the game because we haven't even turned the truck on. So I'm just gonna move this stuff out of the way. Go ahead and put this little bottom cover back on. Now keep in mind, you can do this even quicker when you're doing it at home because you don't have to go over how to charge stuff. Now this manual is gonna talk about some different things, not the least of which is how to bind if you would need to bind, okay? It's also gonna say, don't leave your battery plugged in. That is a no brainer with LiPos. And it's gonna talk about all the different features. Okay. Precautions for install. So they're talking about the foot plate. Okay, so there's evidently some running boards that can be installed right here and right here. I don't know if ours didn't come with running boards or I just haven't found them yet. Oh, here they are. Here's the running boards. You didn't realize there was running boards. Okay, so it looks like there's a total of two screws, three screws, four screws. Good, because I was getting nervous there thinking, how are you gonna put all four on with just one? 
So they go right here. Now I'm gonna warn you about this. This is gonna really, eh, it's not gonna add much to your ground clearance issues, but I can definitely tell you this, that is gonna get in the way. I'm gonna opt not to put those on for the reason that we just said. Ground clearance is a huge deal on these little cars. And so I want as much as I can get without giving up cool scale features. And to me, I'm not a big running board fan anyway, but it is cool that it comes with a car. So we'll put it in that package. Now the tailgate, this one is gonna go in here. Should be pretty simple. Snap it in, snap it in. And it uh, looks like I just close it like this. Not as tight a fit as I would normally expect to see on an FMS product, but it does fit good now. Looks totally sweet, and I definitely don't want the running boards. I don't like the way they look. Okay, so that being said, if you look through, they will talk about the AB functions. So you can see right here, it's gonna tell you what you can do with your transmitter. It's gonna talk about loading the batteries, and then here's the light conditions, okay? So you can actually set these up and we might look into that for just a quick second after we pause the video. But for now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and get this thing fired up with a good battery. I must say that tailgate does pop down a lot easier than I'd like it to, but not a big deal. Okay, black goes away from me. These are also keyed, they'll only go in one way. If you want, you can use a voltage alarm on that balance lead and it'll tell you when your voltage is down to the point where you have to quit fly, uh, driving rather and the battery fits really nice in there. Probably put a bigger one if you wanted. Okay, so let's see if this works. We've got flashing lights. See, nothing, nothing, nothing. I'm gonna turn this off, I'm gonna turn it back on. Still nothing, okay. Is there, was there a power switch in there? And uh, the camera crew has a very good idea. There's a bind button there, looks like. So I'm just gonna press it. There, it goes. there you go, so it's done, okay? So that was easy. Okay, so steering is working. I'm gonna go ahead and take a seat real quick. We'll do a little driving if you wanna get a little closer where you were before. Okay, so proportional controls. You see the turn signal works. Turn signal over there works. Let's show you the back. Obviously this is full-time four-wheel drive. Okay, so no lights when you're driving forward. Brake lights and reverse lights. Okay, so forward and then braking. Yep, it looks like it goes back and forth very good, which is nice. Now I'm gonna show you one other, tick, uh, one other trick that you're gonna wanna do, and that is when you go to use this thing, there's one thing you're gonna wanna do. You can go steering trim, and I forget the button order, but you can go A, B mode, and you can press up or down, and then B mode, you can press up or down. So steering trim, throttle trim, and what's this, angle reversed steering? Okay, so it looks like nothing's changing there. I wanna look at the lights and see if I can remember how to do this. So usually I have to go to B mode and press steering trim. Okay, nothing there. Throttle trim, there you go. Okay, so throttle trim up and down when you put this into the B mode. Low beams, high beams. Okay, then when driving, you can get your turn signals still. And then that's full speed right now. Okay, now I'm gonna see if there's a second gear. I don't feel anything changing. Looks like that's pretty much full speed as normal. Okay, let's show the people underneath. Okay, so one thing I like to do on these cars and trucks is that I like to get the steering not just trimmed out straight, but I like to change the dual rates if there is such a thing. Okay, so I'm gonna see one, one. See, look, one, see how much it turns? Now two, now three. You hear that beep, beep, beep. Here's one, beep, two beeps, then three beeps when you're in mode B. Okay, I'm gonna go back to mode A. And now you can see you've got that nice sharp turning radius. I'm gonna pull into my little garage here really carefully go forward and then back up. You've got super good discrete control with precision. <laughs> and that's what's so cool about these cars and trucks anymore. Is it used to be 
that you couldn't really precisely control these things because it was sort of an all or nothing. But as you can see, as I steer, I can move a little bit or I can move a lot and I can move slowly or fast. It just depends on it. And of course, there's gonna be a maximum speed on everything, but there's gonna be a definite improvement over anything you would have remembered as a kid because these things are very resilient and they also have the squishy soft tires that grip just about anything. In fact, let's see if we can climb up on this charger because that seems like a good thing to climb up on top of. Oh, I'm gonna push it off. That's what I'm gonna do. So we'll just drive down here. Okay, so real quick thought. There's also some lights on here, which is a nice kind of cool thing. Not like you're gonna be using it as a flashlight, but you can sit there and study the car if you're in the dark, because sometimes you need to see what's going on. And then also if you just, what we'll do is we'll point this at the camera and then you guys can look at it if you need to change your settings, okay? So if you need to see this, we'll just get that camera set up and then you can pause your, your screen. And then we're gonna flip the page and show you these are the different things you can do for your lights. And it talks about the different conditions to turn it on and how to do that. So we're gonna study that for a quick second and show you if we can show you anything we haven't already seen. Okay, so there's one more setting I wanna talk about and that is when you're in the B mode, meaning you've got this slide switch over to here. When you press this, watch this. Okay, so I'm gonna pull the trigger pretty fast. Now I'm gonna press it. Okay, now I'm gonna go reverse. Okay, now forward or that. See how there's a different speed? So the way you do it is when it's in B mode, you can do that. Now, I'm not sure if you can do that in A mode too, but I'm gonna try it. It doesn't look like it. Yep, it's only done when you're in A or B mode. See, when you're in B mode, then this channel four changes between slower and faster, okay? Now keep in, mo keep in mind, you can still drive a car fast if it's got the slower, you can, you can go faster if you're in the full speed setting, but if you're in the slower speed setting, you never go faster, if that makes any sense. Basically, you can still pull the trigger less far and go slow, but it's quite a bit harder. So that's why they give you that function, because then when you're in that crawling mode, you can go ultra slow, which is really cool when you're trying to actually crawl on rocks and stuff. So my, my suggestion would be if you're driving a long ways, you put it in that mode, you go fast, you get where you're going, and then you can change. Now also, I'm gonna go back into A mode and just see, there's no change in state with the channel five climbing button, and then channel six. Doesn't seem to have any function, so we're gonna put it into B. Doesn't have any function. There is a function there. There's a beep and a beep beep. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's high speed, low speed. And it looks like channel four, train, and channel five, climbing, both do the same thing. So there's a beep or beep beep. So beep beep being high speed, beep being low speed. And this is the same thing. Beep being low speed, beep beep being high speed. Beep beep being high speed. So as you can see, you can go relatively quick for a 1 18th scale. And uh, the Toyota Hilux, Helix is just, it's something that would have been just before our time. So it's kind of a cool nostalgic thing. And if you're into these older trucks, this is definitely for you. And if you haven't experienced something in recent history, in terms of RC crawlers, this thing is gonna really impress you because when you go out and you use it outside, you're gonna really understand. Which you've already seen because we put our videos in reverse order. We appreciate you very much watching our video and hopefully we've answered many of your questions. And yes, we did leave those pages open for you because there are gonna be some questions that come up about setting that. Um, basically just play with the controller and you'll get it. And then the only thing I didn't show you was look at the instrument cluster. It's super detailed, which is cool. We always love that there's little details in these scale cars. But the doors don't open, so you really gotta look to see it. Now the other thing too is if you get one like this, one thing we noticed about this is that this looks metallic, but then this looks like plastic because it's so thin. You may want to load the back when you go to crawl with these 118 scales because they're, they're very heavy for their size, but the thing is it really helps if you load them down with some uh, you know, rocks or something of the sort. It'll make it dry even better. 
And uh, of course, the squishy tires will really come into play when you go to crawl. So hopefully we've answered some questions for you. And if this is something you think you might like for yourself, check out the links in the video description below. You can buy one for your very own there and you'll help support our channel if you buy it through the links. So we appreciate you doing that. Also, if you wanna help us out financially, you can go to Patreon and we have links down below to help support us. We have a small handful of people that help support us on Patreon, so thanks, Patreons. And then there's also PayPal for people who don't want monthly support. And we always say it, same thing. If you wanna support us, the best thing you can do is just buy these awesome pieces of equipment, whether it be a ground vehicle or air, aircraft, what we normally specialize in here on Brian Phillips RC, or if it's you know like a leaf blower or a tractor or whatever it is that we're talking about at the time, we really appreciate you guys being here with us and there's so much more to come from Brian Phillips RC. Thanks for watching.